Hello everyone and welcome back to The Little Blue Fly. If this is your first time visiting, welcome and I invite you to subscribe to my channel. It's as simple as pressing the subscribe button, tapping that bell, and making sure to select all to receive all of my future postings. Everyone, today is such a special day here at the cottage. Why, you ask? I'll tell you why. Because I get to garden in the rain. To me, there is something so free and releasing when gardening in the rain. My soul is completely blooming as nature brings in all its goodness. So today, I would like to share and take you along as I make topiaries after the rain. I cannot even begin to share how alive I feel right now. That being said, let's begin, shall we? So taking a quick glance over of the back patio, it's starting to come along. I have the stone now all clean and conditioned. As you can see, all the water from the rain is all beaded up on top of the stone and that's a good thing. And now we are just gonna spend some time on painting the rails. Not today, but soon, this upcoming week, I'm sure. Because I'm still pushed out of the house from all the electrical work in the living room. I'm gonna start things off by sharing a few of some new planter pots I have just recently purchased from Lowe's. I cannot, I cannot recommend these enough. They are a fabulous heavy duty concrete. And anything you place inside them when it casts da cascades down off the side, absolutely beautiful. Now these are new as well, some metal baskets, and I just have one of this particular style, and then three others at the bottom. And they all hang up by chains. Now what's so grand about those I will share in a moment. I have some miracle Grow potting mix. And I haven't used this before. I normally use black cow, but they were out. But you know, I need a good type of manure soil to go in with my miracle Grow potting soil. Just makes things extra rich and all the plants absolutely love it. I'll be mixing it right here in this planter. Ignore those rags. <laughs> they got caught in the rain. I forgot to throw them away after doing the conditioning on the back stone. <laughs> Anyways, getting back to these beauties. These were originally at the bottom $35 a piece. $34.99. And I told my husband I would love these for my birthday that's coming up. And the top one was $12.99. They gave us the top one for $1 and all these three bottom ones for $5 a piece. Total score. They came home with me quickly. And now to share some of the wonderful greenery I have recently purchased. I have these two very tall, ignore my finger, over in the corner screen. <laughs> But in the back, I have two very tall topiaries and they were purchased from Lowe's and these beautiful, beautiful geraniums. These were actually purchased from Walmart. It's such a healthy plant. The wonderful thing about geraniums, they, they love the heat. They're, they are not sensitive at all. And they just, they get 
quite large and quickly. And I have some salvia. Love the color on that. And then quite a bit of verbena. So we'll see how it grows for me here in Virginia. I'm new to the Virginia gardening this year completely. In California, I love working with this. It just, the hotter the better for these plants. And then of course, you can't have a flower pot without some creeping Jenny. The yellow green color is, it's just magnificent, don't you think? It just really makes all the surrounding colors just look that much more vivid. So I purchased a couple of them from Lowe's, I believe it was, yeah. And then again, these gorgeous topiaries. Topiary, these can get costly though. So we're gonna start off by making a couple topiaries with some pots that were purchased from Lowe's. And the ivy came from Lowe's as well. So I have my soil nice and mixed up. And I realized that, you know, first let me fix my glove. I am just a soaking wet mess. I'm wonderful. I'm having a wonderful, wonderful morning. I purchased these pots from the Dollar Tree. And some moss, of course. We always have to have the moss. So now I have everything all situated and I believe we can start building topiaries. Water everywhere. This, it's so fun, guys. If you ever get the chance to garden in the rain, please do. Who cares if you're getting all wet and soggy and it's all messy? It feels so good. At least to me, it's wonderful. <laughs> I'm just going to pull these sleeves up gardening in this this hoodie with it being all wet is sort of like trying to swim with jeans on <laughs> anyhow what i'm gonna do is push all of this green ivy uh, ivy i'm sorry moss through um, all these openings on the planter pot you know i could have just you know not put anything there but i just didn't want to see just a gray pot you know coming out through the openings i just wanted a little extra added color and this is just for um the beginning of when you know when the topiaries first start um, to form because eventually the ivy is going to start growing and i will um, welcome it to come down um, over onto the planter but for now I just wanted to add a, just a little bit of more variety to the pot so I'm just pushing it all through and then the excess I actually didn't show um, what I went back to do I actually went with some scissors and cut all the excess um, moss off um, on the inside of the planter. But not so much to where it would fall through the hole, if that makes sense. But I just didn't want a whole bunch of moss hanging out on the inside of the planter. As I'm doing this, it's just, it's drizzling here and there, just very lightly off and on. The birds, they're just, they're mingling with each other. The canaries are out here singing. It, it's just wonderful. I would have loved to have shared the you know the actual sound with you all but for some reason you just 
everyone, their mother, their father, their cousins, just the whole family just are dri driving by. Their vehicles are so loud. So it just sort of took away from that. But I was able to put in some sound here and there um, throughout this video. So pay close attention and you'll hear all of our beautiful birds mingling and singing. I'm getting closer to being finished with the pot. And there's another story that I would just have to share with you all. So we get these big bumblebees here. I call them silly bees. They're really big. They're harmless. They're just huge black bumbles. Well, I, I call them a couple. I think they're a couple or something. Well, one bee comes down to me and, you know, I'm a nature baby, so I'm not scared of bees at all. And he probably will come about, oh, four or five inches from my face and we'll just have conversations. And he is just the sweetest ever. He's my new friend. Whenever I come outside, he immediately comes to me and I just get to talking to him. And well, I don't think Mrs. likes it too much. She swoops down on him and they just swoop around for a little bit. And then she takes off and he comes back to me to visit. <laughs> so I have a new friend. Hopefully she'll become my friend soon as well. So we have it all finished. I placed in the pot from the Dollar Tree. And quite a bit is coming out on top, which no worries. Look at all that water on the table. <laughs> Mixing up the soil really good. This is such nice, rich soil. I'm probably just going to fill this pot up just a little over half ways. And then I'm going to use one of my topiary rings. And I actually have these from last year when I purchased topiaries from um, Trader Joe's. I'm just going to place it right in. Now I did also find some rings and I will be placing them in my description box below um, to my Amazon storefront where you can purchase some topiary forms. So I'm going to add two ivy plants. Now I really could have just added one, but I guess I'm just being a little impatient and I just, I want to um, see more progress more quickly. <laughs> so I'm planting two. I thought this one was just going to come right out, but it's going to need a little help. So I placed one ivy plant in the back and I'm going to place the other up front. And I believe this is going to work out nicely. I'm just going to place soil all on top now to get up to the top. And what I like to do is take a couple of my fingers and just press down into the soil to make sure there's no empty air pockets in there. But I never compact my soil because you want things to be able to breathe. You know, a compacted plant would be like us wearing a very tight pair of jeans and that doesn't feel too good. <laughs> so I just poke around and just loosely have my soil all inside the pot. So now we're, you know, we're finished planting it. It's nice and messy. No worries. I'm just going to wrap 
some of the longer branches around the ivy form. And as it grows, I'm just going to keep wrapping it around. I'm going to spray off all the leaves and they are eventually going to go down over the gray pot and it's going to look absolutely beautiful. So they're all nice and cleaned up now. I have the two topiaries. I'm going to be placing them in my sunroom. We're going to get back in there once this living room gets finished. But now I just want to create something very simple with this piece I thrifted in North Carolina last year. Everything about this piece is just fabulous. I love all the aged goodness all over. It's a piece that I just enjoy decorating with over and over again in many different ways. But for right now, I want to place in some real plants. And we will start at the top. I have this small piece of jute here, actually burlap. Let's move that wet, soggy arm sleeve again. <laughs> it's so great out here, everyone. And I'm just going to drape it over the top. And then the next thing I'm going to do is add in this wonderful, it's called Lauren's Lace Ivy. This is such whimsy ruffled leaves all over the place and they offer, this plant offers such a playful variegated color at its tips. And she is just going to go wild everywhere and that is what I'm looking for. And I'm going to add um, this willow branch uh, going around the pot. Now eventually you're not going to be able to see any of that because the plant will grow over. And that's what we're aiming for. So down at the bottom I'm going to start with a garbage bag. Just a clear garbage bag and I have it all pressed in. Because I want to try to protect the tray, the metal tray. And then I have this coconut liner. And I'm just going to place it on top and just really, um, you know, just play with it a little bit and see, you know, where it's going to, how much I'm going to need to get a good coverage inside each tray. And then I will cut it out. So here's one tray. So at the bottom to protect, I have the garbage bag and I'm just going to take these extremely <laughs> dull kitchen scissors <laughs> and cut this plastic bag because Bev doesn't know where her scissors are because my house is such a mess right now with everything that there's no order. There is no order going on inside at all. So I had to use these scissors. But we'll get the job done, no worries. So this is a nice fit in here. So I have finished all three now. And at the bottom of all of these, I'm gonna, I didn't have any rocks. I'm just gonna add in um, some pieces of bark down at the bottom. And that's just because I don't have drainage holes. I found this good performance uh, by Miracle Grow Performance Organics. 
Now I'm going to be working with ferns and this offers all the wonderful ingredients that ferns love. It will give the perfect environment. Normally I do use a soil for ferns, but as you can see, there's so many items in here that just that the fern soil actually has itself. And just look how rich and wonderful this soil is. The ferns are going to have good air, good drainage. And because these are shallow, I'm just going to put a small amount of dirt at the bottom because with ferns you don't need a deep planter because ferns don't have a deep root system they like to spread out so basically they like to hug they like to have their roots go outwards and they're gonna have plenty of room to do that so again, just a thin layer of soil down at the bottom. And then I'm going to place in these sweet little ferns that were purchased from Lowe's. Make sure to go in there and get out all those unwanted fern pieces in there so I'm not quite sure again how this is going to work but we're gonna try it it's always fun trying something out because you learn you know if it doesn't go exactly as you hoped it would, you know, it, it, it's okay. It's all a learning process. So up at top, I added in some moss in the willow stick. And that is exactly what we're going to do down here at the bottom as well. I'm going to place it all around to cover up that, um, unwanted plastic look and I'm gonna look for my additional moss that's buried somewhere in the house and I'm also going to place it around the ferns as well to help keep in the moisture because ferns like good moisture they do not want to be saturated they just want a good amount of moisture so I'm going to learn them and see how they like it. And the moss does add, you know, a, um, a nice color and texture. Perfect. <laughs> 